Hi guys, welcome to today's Radical Living. As you can see, I'm here by myself. Um, my mom's currently out of the country traveling and ministering with my dad, which is so awesome, but we wanted to keep going um, this week as well with you guys. And we're actually gonna start a series. So this will go for the next few weeks and we're really going to dive into and talk about the topic of the armor of God. I was really reading this the other day and looking at it and you know so many people talk about the armor of God you know put on the armor of God and um, they tell you all these things you know you have to always be ready and prepared and and put it on every day um, but what does that really mean what does that really entail as I was reading I was like okay this is great, but how are we supposed to put on the armor of God? How is this going to help us? Um, what does it really mean? You know, there's there's six p different pieces of the armor that are mentioned. What does each of those really mean, and how can this help us, you know, in our walk with God? And so that's what we want to do. We want to dive into each specific piece, why we need it, what it's for, how is this going to help us, and um, just really go from there. And I'm really excited. Um, this has really been speaking and ministering to me as I've um, really started studying this and diving into this. Um, so today we're going to start with two of the six pieces and then we'll see from there. We might do one, one, one a broadcast or two, um, just depending. Um, but today these two kind of go hand in hand. That's why I decided to combine them together. So let's start. Let's go straight into Ephesians 6, uh, starting at verse 10 and read the scripture of the whole armor and then we'll go from there. Um, so Ephesians 6 verse 10 it says a final word be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places and therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in times of evil. Then after the battle, you will be still standing firm. Standing your ground, put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So right before it even goes into like the armor of God part, it starts off with, you know, put on your armor so that you can stand firm against the strategies of the devil. So when I read that, I was like, okay, most people, they tell us just about the armor part, you know, put on every piece of the armor. But the reason we put on an armor, the reason we need an armor is to resist the strategies of the devil. You know, as it says in the word, the enemy, he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy us. Um, so that's his strategy, his battle plan for our lives. You know, he has a plan for us just like God does. God has a wonderful plan. He wants to bless us, and he wants us to follow him with all, with all our hearts and lives. But the enemy, he has a plan for us too. He sees us as a long-term project, and he tries, you know, every day to get us to compromise so that eventually... In a few years, we'll be so far from God that it'll seem impossible um, to get back on track, to get back on track with God. Um, so that's the enemy's plan. That's his strategy. So that's why we need this armor um, to help us to overcome those strategies, to live victoriously. And even here, I found this part interesting. You know, it says we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. You know, many times um, people do hurt us, you know, whether it be family, friends, coworkers. Um, not that we like mean to or try to, but sometimes people hurt our feelings or whether they say something or they didn't do something you were expecting them to. Um, but we have to realize that the enemy tries to use those tools to build a bitterness in your heart, unforgiveness. He tries to destroy your relationships, whether it be with your family or friends. Um, but who's the real enemy we're facing? You know, we're not, um, our enemies aren't people. We're supposed to love um love people and pour into them with all our hearts you know like like the lord's commanded us um it's really the enemy who's trying to get us to see people in a bad light or get off track you know so that we destroy those relationships because if we destroy relationships our hearts become hardened and it's hard to hear god's voice so he tries to use all these things to try to really get us off track um but what does it say? You know, we, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We're fighting against the actual enemy, the real enemy, which is Satan. Um, so as I was looking at this, um, 
I thought about, okay, this is Paul writing this um, during the time, and this is during the time when the Roman Empire was pretty strong. Um, so I thought, okay, let me look at um, what a Roman armor would look like, what it would have looked like back then. Um, so I was looking at the different parts, and you know, a belt, um, it's kind of still the same today. You know, we tie it around our waist, and it's um, completely, you know, is around our body. So basically, what that kind of represents um, is that it encompasses us or surrounds us. So the truth, uh, the belt of truth, is that truth that's actually surrounding us. You know, surrounding our whole body. That's what it um, should be. And I saw also that when you look at the Roman armor, um, the belt holds what's called um, a scabbard, and that's what you put your sword into. So it's like that little halter piece that you put your sword into. That's why I wanted to do these pieces together, because it holds this piece for your sword, the sword of the spirit. Um, and it said... Um, the sword, uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the sword of the spirit represents the word of God. So we should be surrounded by the truth of God's word all the time. That's what it really means, and they go hand in hand. So um, let's take this and look at a verse in John 8, verses 31 and 32. And it said, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what does it say? We're his disciples if we remain faithful to his teachings. The teachings right here in the word of God. We have to be faithful to these. We have to know these. Um, and if we know this truth, the truth of God's word, that's what will set us free. Um, because the number one um, thing that the enemy tries to use against us is lies. He tries to lie to us, telling us, you know, you're not good enough. The, um, this person doesn't like you. Um, who are you to do um, whatever it is you're wanting to do? Um, so it's all based on lies. But if we know the truth, if we know what's in this word and know what God says about us and what we see, you know, he has for us, you know, because our portion is blessing, it's healing, it's favor everywhere we go, you know, blessed in the country, blessed in the city, when we go in and out. Once we see that and understand that, that truth is what really sets us free. So that's that's what it's saying here. It's the truth, the truth of God's word. That's what sets us free. And it, it, it exposes those lies of the enemy. So we know, okay, you know, that's not what God's word says. That's not my portion. So I refuse that. Um, I'm not going to think that way. And um, that's what's um, really awesome and super important. Um, so I want to go to another verse in Hebrews 4. Let me flip to it here. Um, okay, yeah, Hebrews 4, starting at verse 12. And this really talks about, you know, how God, you know, it's called the sword of the Spirit. Because the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit is really what works in us as we read this word. It gives us revelation, gives us knowledge. And we really see, wow, God, this is what you mean. Um, so it says here, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. He is the one to whom we are accountable. So we see here, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, you know, cutting between our soul and spirit. It really cuts away the things in our lives, you know. Um, it exposes the innermost thoughts and desires um, that we have. You know, we read this word sometimes and we see, oh, wow, I am definitely not doing this and I should be doing this. And it kind of helps us, you know, to really get on track and we, uh, read more and study more about that topic, whatever it is. The Lord really helps us and he uses, you know, that sword to cut away the things in our hearts and in our lives that shouldn't be there that we need to work on and and um, get rid of and it really sharpens us um, so just to bring this point home even more of how important the truth of God's word is surrounding us I want to look at Jesus because he's the best example of all so we want to look at his example so if we turn to Matthew 4 um, I want to read the story of you know when Jesus he goes out into the desert and fasts for 40 days and 40 nights and the enemy tries to come and tempt him and we'll see what he does is right in line with what we've been talking about this whole time. So it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, 
And the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scripture says people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil came and took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect you, and he will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. But Jesus responded, The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. And we see here tries a third time. Now the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, to um, Jesus told him. For the scripture says you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. So we see here the enemy, he tried to come. He tried to tempt Jesus with all these things. And even the second time we see, he uses scripture. He tries to twist scripture um, to make it fit in this situation. But the Lord knew, Jesus knew. He said, you know, no, this is not the way that it's supposed to be. He knew other scriptures as well, not just that one, because sometimes the enemy, he does. You know, he we, we read a scripture and we're like, wow, that's awesome. And then he's like, yeah, but that's not working for you. That's not, you know, um, but we need to get our minds focused on the word and really use that. Um, I love that it's that Paul writes the sword of the spirit because the sword, the word of God, that's our sword. This is what we fight the enemy with. You know, the sword, everything else is like a protective armor, but the sword, that's what you use to kill your opponent, to kill your enemy and to fight the battle. So this word here, this is what we use to really fight. And we see that here with Jesus. He used scripture every time um, the enemy tried to come against him and what, what happened then. The enemy had to flee in the end um, because he couldn't win that battle because Jesus knew the word so well um, that he couldn't um, overcome him and he, uh, Jesus came out victorious in the end. And I want to end this off um, with a story that I recently heard um, and that I recently read, uh, reading a book by Kenneth Hagen, and it's an awesome story. And this happened in 1933 in California. So the Navy, um, they were working on this big uh, Zeppelin, you know, those things, those huge, massive things that um, go in the sky. They were using it um, for the Navy in their battles. Um, I don't know exactly what for, but basically what they were trying to do uh, one day is they were trying to um, tie this thing down to like their anchor piece, whatever they have there. Um, um, but all of a sudden, as all these men were trying to tie it down, this thing all of a sudden just shot up into the air um, randomly. So all the people, of course, you know, they stepped back. They were like, okay, we're just like, going to let this go, you know, because otherwise this thing's going to fly us up but three of those men um they got caught up with this thing and they were you know trying to hold on for dear life as this thing went into the air they didn't think to jump off um quickly like all the other guys you know um, so this thing starts going up into the air, into the air, and these three guys are holding on for dear life, and then all of a sudden two of them, they just can't hold on anymore, and they fell down, you know, to the ground, and they actually died in the process because it was so high up. Um, but then there was the one guy, he still held on, and he was still up there, and this thing kept going up higher and higher into the air, and there was, you know, all the people down on the ground, so they were horrified. They're like, if he falls, he's going to be, you know, a splattered when he comes down because this this is way too high. So they were all terrified down there. Finally, um, it, they didn't say how, but somehow they were able to get this um, Zeppelin back down to the ground. And the guy, he was there the whole time, came down um, completely unharmed, completely fine. Um, and, the, and the people asked him, they're like, how in the world were you able to hold on for so long and so high up there? It must have been, you know, terrible. How do you have that much arm strength, basically, you know? Um, and he was like, listen, I didn't, I didn't hold on at all. I grabbed the rope, tied it around myself um, like a belt and just hung there. And I, I was just swinging around there and it was beautiful. And he, he had a great time up there. Um, and he had no issues because he had tied it around himself and was letting that rope hold him instead of trying to hold on to the rope um, for dear life. And that's basically um, exactly the same thing, you know, with the word of God and with what I just said, having that belt of truth, the sword of the spirit constantly around us, you know, people, um, Christians these days, you hear them all the time, you know, oh, I'm just holding on, I'm just holding on. But what they're doing is they're trying to fight battles when the enemy comes against them. 
they don't know the word of God. They don't know what's in here. So they're trying to fight battles in their own strength and trying to hold on for dear life like these two other guys instead of knowing the word of God so well that when um, attacks come or things come against you, you just tie, tie the word of God around you and say, you know, I'm going to let the Lord fight this for me, you know. Because I'm going to tie this belt around me um, and I'm standing, I've, I fall back onto the word of God and let it hold me instead of trying to hold on for dear life, trying to do it in your own strength. Because we can't do it in our own strength. We need the Lord. We need the Holy Spirit um, to help us every step of the way. So that's what we want to really focus on today, you know, make that a point to really know this word, the truth of this word, because that's what will set us free. That's what will help us um, to be able to fight against the enemy every time. This is our, our greatest weapon that we have, um, and we need to use it and know it every day. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys, and um, let's just pray. Lord, I just thank you and praise you so much um, for what we were able to learn about this armor, Lord, about the belt of truth, wrapping it around us, the sword of the Spirit, your word, Lord, um, which is always before us, which we can use to um, fight against every attack of the enemy. Anything that comes our way that faces us, we know, Lord, that we have your truth, your word constantly surrounding us. Help us to dive into this word every day, to learn, to learn it inside and out, to know so much about you, Lord, that we'll know ahead of time what your word says um, and we'll be able to let you fight the battles for us, Lord and to tie it around our waist and 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 to let you do um, um, do what you do, Lord, because we are so grateful, so thankful, Lord, um, and we just thank you so much um, for this wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so um, honored that I got to come on here and share with you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, a great day. Um, remember to focus on the Word of God. Make it a point today to really start um, using these points, you know, using um, the belt of truth and the, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Train yourself every day um, so that you can overcome and be victorious in every situation um, that may come your way in life. Um, and don't forget, as my mom always says, um, to talk to someone about Jesus today.